Hey everybody, welcome to the weekend. It's Wednesday and it's our weekly broadcast of a blind guy, his wife, and their life. And this is a channel where we introduce you to fabulous people within 30 minutes of our uh, 30 minutes time span. We introduce you to fabulous people in our life that kind of give you insight into what it means to change the narrative of what it means to be normal, where we shift the focus from being disabled to being differently able through the interactions that we'll share with these special people. Today is a special episode because today is my birthday. Woo! Happy birthday. Happy I, birthday. Happy I am birthday. 19 again. 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 Just so that you guys know, Corey and I are the same age. He's always talking about, she's older than me. She's older than me. But she, today, she's a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> today, sweet daddy was just that sweet. That's all it was. As I was saying, we are the same age. So, guys, welcome. We have so many good things happening today. So, Corey, if you just want to tell them what to expect, we can roll with it. Every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 11.15 to 11.40 a.m. to 11.45 a.m., we bring to you a blind guy, his wife, their life live. And each day is filled with some fun. We have our word on the street today, which is going to be brought to you by two special people in my life. Ooh. My actual cousins, Wade State. Why do you say actual cousins? Because people say. And why are you putting his whole government name? He might not want his whole name. Okay, I'll do his, I'll do his regular name. The Right Reverend Bishop Arch, the Archbishop, Deacon Doctor Wade Senior Junior, and then his son Wade Sean. They're going to bring us our word on the street you today. You kind of gave a lot of info. I know, but um, we actually because you know people got play cousins. You know, play cousins. These are not my play cousins. These are my blood cousins, my, my real biological cousins. Then we have none other than a special guest who's a fabulous storyteller himself that has traveled across the sea to the continent of Africa as a storyteller. And he's also got some connections to the Black Panther movie. We're going to talk about that as well. Good, Corey. Um, just so that you know, this guy that's connected to the Black Panther um, movie, he's a phenomenal storyteller. And he says that he's going to talk about how uh, phenomenal we are as storytellers, mainly me. I think he said that he's yeah, going to, even though it's job, your birthday. You're doing a good job telling the story right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, with that being said, we're also going to end today with a plant-based treat of the week. So we'll have, the queen has something delicious that she's going to share with you. And along the way, we'll read the comments of our viewing audiences as they, as they come in. So Corey, they're coming in. Philip Waldo Jr. is saying, good morning, all. Sean Bright is saying, grand rising, everyone. Happy birthday, Corey. Thank you. Thank you. And Philip Waldo Jr. also says, enjoy your day, Corey. Hey, Deborah Green. Hello, family. So glad to catch you live. Happy birthday, Corey. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, our children, our Watoto, are saying, Happy birthday, and guess who is here all the way from Ghana? We were just talking about Prince Ayoko and his video on the Baobab tree. He was mm -hmm. telling us all of those in, that information. He's in Ghana. He is a prince. He says, greetings, my lovely family. Happy Thank you, Prince Ayoko, joining us all the way from Ghana. we got to get you in on one of our lives as well, so we'll make sure that we get your information so that we can bring you on and share all the wonderful information you're sharing on your channel as well. Absolutely. He's he's just a wonderful builder. He has so many other uh, people that work with him as well. And he says, happy birthday to you, my lovely brother. I wish you good health, long life, prosperity, abundance of wisdom, and health. Thank so, you very much, Prince Ayoko. Of it's course, good to be greeted by royalty this morning. Oh, yeah. That's a nice birthday treat. Anthony Bircher's another storyteller, says, happy birthday. Hey, <laughs> Anthony Bircher. How you doing with the uh, the, the, ba the Bower of Tabel? <laughs> That's an inside joke there, so he, he'll catch it. Corey, the birthday wishes keep rolling in. Aquaba fam, happy Earth Strong Day, Corey. So Aquaba is a Ghanaian word that means welcome in the language of Chui. Corey, this really is great. I said we get on to your cousins. Like, let's keep the birthday love flowing. Yes. Now, everybody, if you ever watched a good old-fashioned uh, 1920s, 30s gangster mafia movie, you always know there's a hitman, and the hitman has a has plenty of bullets. Well, in my family, it worked a little bit backwards. The bullet had a hitman. Okay. With today's word on the street, it is my cousin, Wade Jr., a.k.a. The Bullet, and his son, Wade Sean, the hitman. With today's 
Word on the street. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, Wade and Wade Sean. Now, Wade, your bullet. How'd you get that nickname? Well, I got that name in the 1990s while um, playing football in high school. Uh, I guess I shaped a little funny. I, <laughs> I was big up top, muscular, and I had smaller legs. <clears throat> but I was pretty fast for my um for my size, and they uh, started calling me the bullet, and the name just stuck. Mm. <laughs> and then years later, you had you they reversed. You had a hitman. Wait, Sean, how'd you get that nickname? I got mine while I was in high school as well. Uh, they gave it to me based off the plays that I would make. I would make big hits and ignite the crowd, and it was just amazing. So that's how they gave me that, and it ended up being in reverse with my father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been to we went to lots of we went to been to a few Way Sean's games when he was in high school, and the uh, girls just thought he was a celebrity. Like we actually went to the NFL and they shook his hand when was, they came to the field and oh that's our cousin wow! <laughs> and that was one of the games where Way Sean ran for a first down on offense, caught an interception as a linebacker, and this then hits a whole bunch of people playing uh, defensive end. I was like, what is this boy? This, this boy he. Carrying on that state and legacy. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, I know I, that's right. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, just so that you guys know, Sean Bright is welcoming Wade and Wade Sean. Uh, Corey, you still are getting more happy birthday messages from uh, LaShonda Brooks. And then, of hey, course, Sean. Uh, hey, y'all, I love going to your, to your Northeastern football games, Wade Sean. Our kids are just happy, happy, happy. That's some games you lit. You know, they, they're just into it. <laughs> well, just know, Corey, I know this is the word on the street, and we have one, but we have a new word. Prince Ayoko from Ghana. He says, Amara Amaraba in the Dagbani language means welcome. Amaraba. Well, thank yes. you very much. Again, great to have royalty visiting with us. And hey, she says, hey, fam. Hey. So what's the word on the street today, Corey? The word on the street. What's the word on the street today, Wei Sean? Imani, the word oh, on the street Imani. today is Imani. And Imani is a Kiswahili word that means faith. You exhibited a lot of, and it's not, not necessarily uh, faith and religion, but more so belief in oneself. And that's translated for you pretty good, because uh, right now you're on scholarship for uh, to play football at a, at a college, right? Yes, sir. Oh, and congratulations. So, yeah, congratulations on that. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that I'm not going to give away too much, but I'll say that uh, he's a good height, but Wei Sean is, is a 230-something pounds, unless he's gained some weight since then. Now, Wei Sean typically is a lot, what they call a viper, which is a, a brief mix of an outside linebacker and a defensive end. He played some inside linebacker in high school. But now he's stuck dead in the middle in the defensive tackle position. That requires a lot of what, Wei Sean? A lot of faith, <laughs> a lot of faith, and a lot of strength. It requires the knowledge of a defensive tackle. So, typically, I would look outmatched on the inside because of size. But I put my mind to it. I use what I've been taught. Use anything that anybody could get. Any type of advice that anybody would give me, and I make things happen. Oh, okay. so believing in yourself and believing in what you know. So that's that he mind, that faith that works. And Philip Waldo Jr. saying, congratulations, Wei Sean. You know, he's so well spoken. It runs in our family. This is just, you know, magnificent. And he's got that state and charm and good looks. They're just agreeing, you know, because, you know, fan Brit says, awesome, congrats. Wei Sean, you know, people are, we just really celebrate people on this on this show. And so when our people come on with the word on the street or with their talents or our special guests, people just love you. They show you love. So that's what they're doing in the chat today. Speaking of love, Corey, uh, Fan Brit says, happy birthday. Happiest of birthdays, old man. Yeah. And in case you have not, <laughs> smash that like button on your way in. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up, <laughs> smash the like button. Wei Sean, what are you studying for in college? Because I know for you, you told me when you graduated that football was a vehicle for you to get what we call a degree for free. So what is your, uh, what are you studying? I'm studying psychology. 
Okay, so then you can finally diagnose what's wrong with your daddy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, when Sean is the hitman, so he plays drums as well, but Bullet, you know, Bullet's when they fly to the daddy, sing, zing. So Bullet, the daddy, can sing. So Bullet, can you go ahead and bless me with a happy birthday song? Ooh, happy birthday song. Just so you know, Corey, naturally, Organic is telling Way Sean, well, she's saying hello to everyone, but she's uh, congratulating Way Sean, more love, more love. And just so that you know, our kids would go home and practice the cheers that the cheerleaders were doing. They really would do that. Just have a Camille, she practiced the tackles that you were doing. Yes. <laughs> so give it a <laughs> birthday. We're ready for it. The birthday song, the birthday lyrics. This is the way the birthday song should sound. Sometimes Corey sings on the show. Give it to us what we should hear. Right. I'll take a moment. To say happy birthday to you today. And I'll take a moment and say, Corey, enjoy your day. And may God, God bless you. May God bless you. Rest in peace, y'all. I mean, he's just rolling on his grave right now, y'all. <laughs> Guys, I appreciate it. And uh, up there, we have some information about uh, uh, Wade Jr.'s, uh, what he's doing out in the community in his hometown. Yes, because the people are loving it. They say, you better sing. So, hey, that's what Brian is telling him. Guys, if you'd like to contact uh, uh, Wade Bullet, Bullet, yes, mm-hmm. then you can reach him, rkim1 at yahoo.com. That's the Rehoboth Kingdom International Ministries email address. Yeah. Contact them so that way if you need a singer, if you need a speaker, you know where a to comedian. Speak, all of those things, you know where to find him. If you need a hitman, he can bring his son. So... <laughs> <laughs> So unfortunately, Corey, Philip Waldo Jr. says, Corey never ever sang like that. So you never ever sounded like that. Sorry. Yeah. But Valanta Queen says, sang, cuzzo, sang. People are clapping. Folks are laughing at Phil. And Christine Brooks, my mama says, happy birthday, son. Thank Love you. you. Thank you. I'm the best son-in-law she's ever had. I don't care who else. What's up with my brother-in-law's list? I don't care. So. <laughs> and then, of course, me and Britt is, is bigging him up all right now. So they are loving it. And so you guys, if you want to find out, uh, you know, more information, if you want to chat with uh, Wade, then you know where to find him. The information is right there on the screen for RKIM1. That stands for Rehoboth Kingdom International Ministries. He really just tried to be sneaky and name his ministry, Rakim. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Y'all made my birthday. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good day. It was our pleasure, guys. And we love y'all, man. All right. We'll see you next time. Well, All right. That was fun. You know, I, I always have a good time getting together with Julia and Wade Julia and Sean. They, you know, we we spent quite a few times together up there at the football games and getting together with family events. So mm-hmm. missed that this year, but you know, we'll get back to it. So um we're gonna move on today with expedite today's uh introduction of our special guest. He's one of my favorite storytellers, and I have uh, I have four, and he's one of the he's one of them, and I, he can captivate any audience. He's actually been a great inspiration influencer influence on us. He's also what we call a straight shooter when it comes to being one of our elders in the storytelling profession. He's and world traveled. He's world traveled, and he's had some good connections, like I said, even to Ruth Carter, the uh, designer, the costume designer for the Black Panther movie when they worked together at Colonial Williamsburg in um, in um, Williamsburg, Virginia. Yeah, we'll have a picture of her with him. And so this is a man who has taught us so much over the years. I teasingly call him Old Father because that's one of his stories. <laughs> and he has a refrain that he uses that inspires me. Who's going to tell it if a teller don't tell it? Because if a teller don't tell it, then it might not get told. Our special guest today is Mr. Dylan Pritchett. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to tell it if a teller don't tell it? Who's going to tell it if a teller don't tell it? Who's going to tell it if a teller don't tell it? If a teller don't tell it, it might not get told. I had to do that for you, Corey. Thank 
you. That's a birthday gift. <laughs> uh, wow. So you're going to start us off today with a five-minute five story. Usually I do a five-minute story, but today you're taking my place. I'm, 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 handing, this, the, the, I'm handing the throne to you today. So... <laughs> So, so we're going to hear, we're going to definitely hear that story because you're a storyteller. So we've got to bring you in the right way. But Corey, the birthday wishes keep coming. Watching the Hawks is saying happy birthday. And of course, Sean Bright is reminding people to click the thumbs up. But Sonovia Ridley just got here, just got back from Ghana. She says coming in here late, caught the ending of that beautiful singing. Hey, to my favorite fam. Happy birthday, Corey. I got a message, Sonovia. Bada da ba da 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 <laughs> Cecil and Sonia Brown is saying happy birthday. Thank you. And uh, Prince Ayoko is listening to that music. He says, wow, this drum sounds like our Simba drums. So, you know, they're in Ghana and uh, Naturally Organic is saying beautiful tone. So go ahead, give us the story. We're ready for you. Everybody's welcoming him, Corey. I have no idea where this story came from. I think I I uh, I read it or heard it, and a lot of stories I hear just once, I just put up there. But this is so simple. But uh, you know, this being the Kwanzaa season, it kind of encapsulates it. It's a real simple story. A farmer once noticed that there was a mouse droppings in his kitchen, so he put a mouse trap in the corner. And that night, that mouse came out looking around to see what had dropped that day, and got around the corner. He said. There's a mouse trap in the house. So he went out. He said, I got to tell somebody. So he went out and he went out there where the chicken was. And the chicken was pecking around. He said, hey, chicken, hey, chicken, there's a mouse trap in the house. The chicken went, ah, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Ah, I'm out here pecking around. Ah, I'm messing on my eggs. Go leave me alone. That mouse trap is your problem. The mouse went, hmm. So he looked around and, and he said, I got to tell somebody. So he saw the pig. He went over to the pig. He said, hey, pig, hey, pig, there's a mouse trap in the house. The, the, the pig went, mm, that ain't my problem. That's your problem. I hope you put some slop out here. That mouse trap, that's your problem. The mouse went, hmm. So he said, he saw a cow. He said, hey, cow, 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 there's a mouse trap in the house. The cow went, man, your problem. Mm, ain't my problem. Man. Your problem. He come out here pulling on me every morning. Mm, that mouse trap, that's your problem. The mouse went, mm. Well, that mouse went around from place to place to place to place to place, telling everybody there's a mouse trap in the house. Everybody, all the animals would say, that's your problem. Well, what happened was that farmer's wife was sweeping in the kitchen, and she ain't know nothing about no mouse trap. And she got around to the corner, and when she went to the corner, that mouse trap snapped down on her toe. Heard her something awful. Heard her so bad, she just started turning black, then blue, to the point where they laid her in bed, caught a fever. Doctor came, checked her out, shook his head. Two days later, that farmer's wife died. So they had to have a funeral. And the morning of the funeral, all the family started coming over. All them statins came over. So many of the family came over until the farmer looked around. He said, Lord, I got to feed these people. These people, I got to feed. He said, I know, I know. We I, 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 get some eggs. So he went out, he got some eggs, but he lifted up the chicken. And when he got the eggs, he looked at the chicken. He said, hmm, we had chicken and waffles. So he went, he killed all his chickens. And but then there were so many of them statins up in there. Then he started looking around. He said, Lord, these people are gonna need more than this. And he looked out. He said, a pig. We had some bacon. So he went out and he slaughtered the pig. So they sat around and had bacon, waffle and eggs. Waffle chicken and eggs. Well, the funeral was kind of sad. She was a good woman. But everybody came back home for the repast. And the farmer looked around. He said, Lord, have mercy. He said, we got a little chicken left. He said, we got some ham. We, we will have to need something else to feed these people. And he looked out and saw the cow. So he went out and butchered the cow. Them people had hamburgers, steaks, uh, uh, fajitas. They ate up everything they had. Then everybody quietly went home. And that's the end of the story. Now, the meaning of the story is real interesting. Because there's a mouse trap in the house. 
And when you don't think it's your problem, it might be your problem. All right. <laughs> and so all of the all of the principles of Kwanzaa is tied up into that. Yes. The injustices that we see of our people. If you don't think that that's a problem for you, mm. there's a mouse trap in the house. Mm -hmm. Throughout our history, we have seen what communities getting together and pulling on one or what that happens to mean. And even in a family and communities, when 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 the when you can't get uh, funding for your for, for the black owned businesses in your community to stay open when you can't get good health care mm -hmm. and you can't get access to your hospital there's a mousetrap in the house and Absolutely. in your city it could be what we see that goes on throughout the country the injustices and so we can't sit back sometimes and say that ain't my problem that's this is that's their problem Right. This is everyone's problem. The mousetrap is everyone's problem. Let me tell you, you are just bringing it today. I mean, we already knew, right. you know, but the people here are loving it. You know, Fan Brit says, wonderful lesson. Uh, Bonnie, Bonnie B is saying, love that. And actually, uh, Bonnie B is also saying, I have his book. It's autographed, too. Yeah, so, you know, we got fans in the house. She says, he's a cool dude. When I bought the book, I didn't have enough money on me. And he let me send him a check later. He didn't even know me. You know, uh, that type of trust, that of money, that faith, that's the principle of the day. And also that Harambe, you know, pulling together as a community is a great message in this story. And that's why we entitled our uh, annual holiday celebration, a Kwanzaa celebration, Harambe for the holidays. That's why it was so fitting for you to come in today. And Don, you have a very interesting pathway to uh, becoming a storyteller. Mm. You actually started uh, as uh, you started music and as a, the first uh, African American drum major in the Fife and Drum Corps in Columbia, Williamsburg. You want to talk about that? Well, I'll pull up the picture while you talk about it because um, you know that way everybody can actually see and have that visual along with it. Just so you know, Corey Bonnie B. Also said, happy birthday. Thank you, Bonnie. Bon Diesel. <laughs> Our children are saying, yes, they love Dylan Pritchett. And you've got welcomes. You know, people are saying, welcome. Prince Ioko is reminding people to hit the like button all the way from Ghana. He's talking to all of you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Right. And then, of course, we also have, just so you know, Corey, another birthday wish. Uh, Sonia with a bye. Happy birthday, brother in love. Thank so, you, yes, she's a vocalist, so we got to sing that. We won't sing it right now. We won't sing it right now. Everybody's happy that Zenobia made it back safely. And, of course, our children says, hey, your stories are so good. <laughs> yes, and just so that you know, also, all the way from the Netherlands, my thoughts on everything is all the way from the Netherlands. He says, greatness at work. Congrats, fam. So I'm going to pull up this picture so you can tell us about this uh, Fife and Drum Corps and, you know, really what this photo means here. Well, the Fife and Drum Corps, Colonial Williamsburg is, a, is, is a, an icon, really. And um, they they accept young, at the, when I was in the Corps, they accepted young boys once you had graduated the fifth grade, or, or for, you, you were in the fifth grade. And, uh, and so um, uh, you, you go in, they train you how to play the instrument. I was a fifer. Uh, and I think I was the second black in the Corps. Uh, the Fife and Drum Corps started in the late, uh, in, in the 60s. And um, uh, I was in the Corps and I ended up being the drum major. Once you were a Fife major, you were a drum major. Then I was on the staff for a while and I was a drum major. This is a rare picture of me drum majoring uh, because uh, I think that because I was black, you did not find very many pictures of me drum majoring an all white core. Um, right. Those who were in the core didn't even notice color at the time because we were young. And not only that, but we were core members. You know, we had a good time because it was music. And mm -hmm. so, uh, we didn't really care about all of that. But I, the, the picture really says something about society is that, uh, you know, how could you have a, somebody who drum majored a fife and drum corps? and you don't have photographs of him leading the Corps. Mm. And, and think of why that would be. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm not bitter about it, but it's something that looking back, I go, wow, I never really noticed it then because I wasn't right. old. Um, but again, uh, there was a mousetrap in the house. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't know I kind of like the farmer's wife, you know. Right. I, and you know something? If I, 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 I don't want to have a slight thing, but sometimes that is what happens with that mousetrap. We don't realize what this one thing means until five, 10 years later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've, yesterday, uh, uh, there was a question, why tell stories? And that's why, because some of these lessons are 10 years ago, things happened and we went, that's what that means now. So right. our, our young people need to understand that some of the things we fight now, put in the back of your mind so that 10, 15 years later, you will understand why the old folks say, wow. We already fought that. Y'all got to mm -hmm. keep fighting that. And it's because they're very, there's not a lot of new fights. But anyway, um, you know, moving on. Well, you know, moving on, I'm going to pull up another picture because some of the people in the picture um, are just, you know, phenomenal. Their legacy is amazing. And just so that, you know, people are definitely loving you. Mr. Wade 72 says, what an amazing show. Mm -hmm. And so our even our children, our Watoto, are saying, that's so cool. <laughs> and so, you know, everyone is excited. Everyone loved your story um, saying, wow. And just so that, you know, another language, Belanza Queen says, that was a great story, Madase. And Madase is a word that means thank you, you know, uh, in Chui, yeah, from Ghana, because you, you, you've traveled all around the world to several African countries. And so I'm going to pull up this picture here and it shows you with a few people that uh, I can't remember if this is the picture where you actually were, I think you were in Colonial Williamsburg for this particular picture. So let's see what we have here. I'm going to enlarge it a little bit. Can you see that okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, Colonial Williamsburg in 1979, 1979-1980. Um, uh, started uh, uh, African-American programming. Uh, half of Williamsburg's population was black, but there was no programming nor a great focus. And so the black music program was put together. And uh, this was the first group of folks that did the black music program. Okay. Uh, and, and, and anyway, uh, j just, just real briefly, Monty Cones sitting down on, from left to right, Monty Cones, myself on the drum, the brother standing uh, uh, with the talking drum, Lamont Carter. Lamont Carter was a boot maker and, and wonderful hands. Um, mm. God rest his soul. He was a Vietnam vet who passed away from Agent Orange. Uh, mm. Down the, plane, love the, slip, the log drum is Dr. Rex Ellis. Dr. Rex Ellis um, is now retired, but uh, during the time he was the director of African American programs uh, later on when the department started, uh, he went to the Smithsonian Museum, came back to Colonial Williamsburg as the first black uh, vice president. And then oh, wow. ended yeah. up at the um, in D.C. Uh, in charge of the exhibits, putting together the exhibits for the National African American um, Museum of History and Culture. And mm. uh, uh, then beside him is Darren Taylor. Darren Taylor went on to act a little bit. He was in Nighthawk and a couple of other um, a couple of other sitcom uh, uh, programs. And mm -hmm. uh, he is now deceased. Rest his soul. And to the right is Eddie Allen. Eddie Allen now lives in Norfolk, um, and, and he uh, was a professor at Hampton University as well as Rex. Uh, later on, the Black, and this was the Black Music Program, was the first program that was offered to talk to show African American music and the, and the importance of African rhythms and music and culture to the African Americans. So that's why the instruments are the way that they are. And later on, Every year, actors would come and go and uh, during the summer. And uh, you had mentioned Ruth Carter. Ruth Carter came in for a year and, and portrayed uh, characters, uh, uh, African-American characters on the streets. Um, uh, oh. Had to talk to Ruth a little bit mm -hmm. because Williamsburg was not uh, an average kind of town. And she would want to walk around with no shoes on. And we said, Ruth, this ain't here. <laughs> we in the city. And then she would put the, the, her, her hat, uh, um, the basket on her head. And we said, this ain't really the place where that would happen, Ruth. But, you know, Ruth was innovative and she was very much Ruth Carter. And, <laughs> and, and 
have to know Ruth because she's she is um, I can't even find the word for Ruth, uh, but she's an Academy Award winner, and that's all right. that she said. And for costuming too, and I think mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, her work not only at Colonial, and she has said that the work at Colonial Williamsburg helped her when it came to doing uh, costuming for 18th and 19th century folk. And she's 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 just phenomenal. Um, every time I look at a movie, a black movie, I want to see if Ruth did the costume. And you can usually tell. Um, but she, anyway, um, she, this was she a, did a phenomenal job with the Black Panther uh, costume. I mean, she really did a lot of research. That's too. one that a lot of people know nowadays, yeah. And like he's saying, he knows the legacy. And, right, and like yeah. he said, he's looking at the credits, realizing that he can a lot of times see her style in different right. films. And speaking of uh, Black Panther and his legacy about African culture that, that and how all the states, you yourself went to Africa and to Senegal, Senegal, Ghana, and Morocco, and you had a, quite an interesting experience with uh, some medicine men there at the oh, at, yeah. uh, in uh, Ghana, was yeah, Senegal. Yeah. yeah, because you know your experience is different than uh, like I'm going to pull up a picture here. And let's see if uh, if I can get this to show. Well, as you do that, as you do that, I kind of build up to it. My my in 1989, before I left, uh, I left Colonial Williamsburg to be a professional storyteller in 1990, and there was an opportunity to go to Morocco and Senegal. Uh, it was an educators, uh, it was an educators trip, and it was at bare bones price. Uh, we had to fly Royal or uh, Royal Air Morocco and spend two days in Morocco. And that was almost free. And we had, and then we went to Senegal. On my second mm -hmm. trip, I went to Ghana, Senegal and Ghana. And um, uh, when I got to Morocco, it was cool, but I said, I, I ain't quite feeling this yet. <laughs> and when we got to Senegal, we were feeling it. And um, uh, that, was, uh, that, 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 that was just mind blowing for me. And I met this young man named Armani. Matter of fact, I have a larger, um, in my living room, I have a, a, a poster size of Armani. Oh. And a poster of this as well in my living room. But anyway, um, do you have the photograph? I Coming up, just a second, let me pull it. Okay, because I had asked Armani to take me to his home and he hesitated and looked at me. He said, oh, bon he said, bon uh, uh, he said, one and a half hour, troll, tro troll. Tro. And I said, well, let's go. And you know, the troll troll is, is like the taxi with all these people in it, you know, you see him hanging on the side. And it was like that two, four, an hour and a half. But we, he took me to his village one day and, um, and I came upon these, uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of things. Right. Um, but I came upon these three men who were sitting under this lean to. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and they said that they were medicine men uh, and then he said, we're not witch doctors. And then I said, um, he said, I could take their picture, but I would have to explain who they are and what they do. Right. And so these men said that there would have to be three of them. And if you have any issues with your health, you go and you tell them what the issues are. And the three of them would ask you questions and then decide how to treat you. And he had these bags of, 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 of roots and he had some, some other bags around them. And he said that they would give Without, you know, their patient, um, you know, whatever cure that they decided. And uh, the cool thing about it, though, was that um, uh, is that he said that nobody paid for anything. Mm. He did and you just leave. And no one in the village uh, really paid for anything. You right. Know? You know, everybody took care of themselves. And um, I think in Bonwire, what I learned most is how we judge people, how we judge dirt, mm -hmm. how we judge things. The man said, why do you comb your hair every day? Why do you wash your feet every day? Mm -hmm. He said, you do it because someone says you have to do it to be acceptable. He said, we don't care if your hair nappy, if you got little coal in eye. <laughs> what is important is your heart. And what comes out of your mouth? Exactly. I could have got a troll troll and came home. <laughs> yes. That's when you this is so funny that you say troll troll because uh not everybody knows that a troll troll is a form of transportation. It's like a cab, it's like the way you move around, all of that. 
Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, anyone, anyone that is of African descent needs to go to Africa and look around and uh, um, and feel. Uh, yes. The, the experience has has changed not only the way that I view Africa, but how I view being an African American. Mm -hmm. That if we don't if we don't remember that root, and that's what storytelling is, is that how you teach. If we don't remember that root, then we ain't gonna have no fruit, and our fruit ain't gonna be as sweet. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, you got you, uh, there are a lot of different apples, but they ain't all sweet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, speaking of Africa, Miss Grace, uh, she's actually a Jamaican woman, but she is in Zambia right now. So she's on the continent, you know, and that's it's, she's doing exactly what you're saying. We ourselves are planning to go to Ghana, preparing for our trip. Just so you know, Corey, Erica Roberts says, hi there. Happy birthday, G. Unk. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Miss Grace, for my birthday, can you give me 45 oh, bucks? <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is this has been so fun today, Dylan. I do want to make sure that we also share our uh, Harambe for the Holidays flyer for our upcoming show because uh, Harambe for the Holidays. I don't know what just happened, guys. I'm sorry, I was sharing the wrong thing. Harambe for the Holidays. We're gonna try to pull up the right picture. Uh, it's our annual show. The information is scrolling at the bottom. We're talking about all of these Kwanzaa principles. And so, you know, with all of these Kwanzaa principles, this is where we want to, uh, we come together with our production on um, the day after Christmas. We always uh, start it this way the, on that day. Uh, we have a show, a stage play. This year it's virtual, which means uh, for this year, you can watch the live stream right here, the stage play. We'll have people uh, zooming in, from the continent, Miss Grace, we need you on the 26th, if you're available, to come in from the continent and show us Africa because we have several connections. Prince Ayoko, if you're available, we'd love to have you come on on the 26th yeah, after Christmas between the hours of 1 and 3, 3 p.m. For well, our time, which our for time. Ghana would be uh, 6, because our 1 o'clock is there, 6 o'clock. Yeah, so they would come in around 6.30. And then Zambia is in central, I, I don't know the time zone, but that would be maybe 8 or 9 p.m. for them. But either way, we hope to see you all there. So definitely, guys, you know, we want to uh, make sure today is my birthday. And it's the you holiday know, season. Corey, another birthday wish from Miss Grace. I love Zambia. Happy birthday, Uncle Corey. Thank and, you. And she said, brah, brah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Miss Grace. And uh, again, we definitely want to uh, thank uh, Mr. Dylan Pritchett for coming. But like I said, you know, um, for for my birthday, for the holiday season, or Kwanzaa gift, we want to get to a thousand subscribers. So share this information. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't hit the like button today, hit the like button, and then hit the notification and, bell. To make sure you get notifications for more videos. So notification bell, subscribes, get other people to subscribe because we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. By the end of your birthday, who knows? Guys, if you are looking for Kwanzaa gifts, Dylan Pritchett, he's an author. His book, The First Music, you can find it on Amazon. So that book that the sister was talking about, Bonnie B, you can find that on Amazon. And then, of course, he also has another book. Um, Dylan, your other book just came out. Um, uh, the name of the book is The, Black, the Speckled Blackbird. The yellow, the, yellow blackbird. the yellow speckled blackbird. So I'll show them because they can find both of these on Amazon. So yellow speckled blackbird, That's this is where you can find it. This is what the cover looks like. And of course, you can see his name right there, Diane Pritchett at the bottom. So you're an author. You're a storyteller. This way, your stories can continue to be told. And how do they contact Mr. Pritchett if they want to book him for any virtual programming or in-person programming? Oh, you know what? Um, for Dylan, he says that he is fine with people contacting him. So, guys, if you are here today and you want to book Dylan because he is um, for hire as far as, you know, he doesn't come cheap or free. 
this is a, his profession. This is what he does, has done for years and years. He's a professional storyteller. So if you're looking for a professional storyteller outside of me and Corey, you know what I'm saying? Because we taught dialing a little bit somewhere <laughs> along the way. I <laughs> know we didn't. <laughs> He's off at Widowmaker.com, area code 757-561-6658. And that is not a typo. It is Widowmaker without the second W. Yes, absolutely. Dylan, this has been so good. <laughs> Yours, yeah, sure. Go ahead and add something. As as a performer, um, you know, the pandemic has has really affected a lot of us, and I'm not just speaking of of myself, but all storytellers and all performers. Yeah. And uh, as the schools get ready to figure out how to stay open, as museums and 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 theaters figure out how to stay open, we are sitting at home and do and we really have to do virtual. So. Right. My, my statement is for those people who have organizations, consider Corey and 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 Lakita, you know, it, all these people who make Thank a you. living doing this um, because we're available and you know we're negotiable now, and because uh, we want to stay safe and we don't want to give anything to the kids or the kids to get to us, and so right. um, uh, you know as a performer, I, I'm not making that plea, but just saying that you know this is our profession. And it's not just something we do on the side, uh, but but we're we're unemployed. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> we're um, but but we gonna make it, right? And uh, and everybody be blessed. Merry Christmas. Hope Santa comes through the front door because he, he got, got a black Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Yes. Man. This has been. Thank you. Happy Kwanzaa to you. Uh, Bonnie B says her students love your book. She loves reading it to them. Uh, she gets to act silly and use funny voices. And Fan Britt is saying, thank you, Mr. Pritchett, for sharing with all of us. Bonnie B is saying, this was awesome. I'm going to have to check that out. And thank you for sharing your talents. Now, just so you know, Corey, Ms. Gray said she wants to call in December 26th. We're okay. going to send her a message. Uh, we have, oh, I don't have her Zambia number. I don't know how to get it. Um, send us an email, info at Atumpan Edutainment. So I don't know. I'll put it in the chat. Info at Atum Pond Edutainment, Miss Grace. That way um, you can send us the number. YouTubers, I'll go. Oh, yeah. Anybody. Uh, anybody that we ask to. Not anybody. Info at Atum Pond Edutainment. <laughs> dot com. We're going to keep it real on this show. <laughs> and so we, we have our children typing it in. Ooh, they even spelled it right. See, this is this. And Miss Grace says, OK, thanks. So this has been wonderful, Dylan. We are going to uh, definitely uh, thank you for this special appearance. We gotta have you back. This was not enough yeah, time. Definitely not enough time. And for once, Dylan, you can actually look at me and say, "Oh, father, you getting old." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, where we all are, and that's a blessing. Yes. yes. Well, thank you for making my birthday a very wonderful birthday with the song, the story, and this, and all your uh, wonderful information. We're going to put you backstage, and if you can stick around, we we would love to talk to you more afterwards. But thank you for joining us, and have a happy holiday season. As we get ready to share one of Laquita Marie's, I'll say Chef Laquita Marie's special hey. recipes. Plant-based treats. Guys, we're trying to make sure you get more fruits and vegetables in your life. So it's time for today's plant-based treat. Sweet potato pancakes. Two sweet potatoes here. I think it's two tablespoons of sugar, to be honest. And I have a little bit of salt right down there in the corner. Just a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to create my buttermilk. So I'm gonna add about eight or nine ounces of milk. And I'm going to squeeze the lemon in. That will create the buttermilk. So I've taken flax seeds and added water to create this flax egg. Tablespoon of flax seeds and water, and that's what it looks like. I'm just going to add two tablespoons in some vanilla. Teaspoon and a half. This is how I started adding my baking powder. Dissolve a tablespoon of baking powder in this tablespoon of non-dairy yoga. Mix the sweet potato, sugar, vanilla, and flax eggs. Ta-da! Mix it all up. We only need about a cup 
of the batter. Now add the baking powder mixture. All in all, I'm going to need about one and a half cups of flour. Add the flour, then add the buttermilk. Mommy added it a little bit at a time. You can add it a little bit at a time or all at once. We got in the pan a little bit of earth balance. Uh, it's got a great buttery taste. Cook it on medium heat. Make sure they don't burn. Flip it once you see the bubbles on the pancake. I don't have anything to say. I just think they were good. Well, that was today's plant-based treats, and you know, I don't even like pancakes really, but I love the quitas because I don't even need the syrup. I just eat the pancakes like they are because they're just so delicious. But so they, she does, that's one, the only pancakes I would eat are the Quita Marie's pancakes. So thank you guys so much for being here today. All the birthday wishes. We apologize for going so long today, but you know, it's Corey's birthday. We had to just stretch it up and enjoy the celebration. Don't forget to join us every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 11.15 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. for more Unless wonderful, it's a birthday. Unless it's a birthday. <laughs> for more wonderful fun with our family and friends and colleagues. Don't forget to join us this Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern, U.S. Eastern Standard Time for our Harambe for the Holidays live stream stage play production. And what we want to definitely say tomorrow, tune in because we have a special guest, hey. Ebony Design. She's Laquita's sister, my sister-in-law. She's a designer from New York City, a celebrity stylist. She is a celebrity stylist. She's worked with artists like Mary J. Blige, and we won't give away all her business, but she has toured the, the world and the country working with celebrities as their personal stylist. So come talk to her about her. You'll be able to see her and learn more about her fascinating work, as well as learning some jive talk from my mother-in-law. My mama. Mama C. So with that being said, we'll Corey, see. with that being said, happy birthday, Corey. Enjoy your special day. That's what Bonnie B says. She's probably going to rewind this video. She says, her and Cam were just talking about those pancakes, and now they have the recipe. <laughs> so with that being said, we want to thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Blind Guy. His wife. Their life live. And as a shout out to Mr. Dylan Pritchett, who's going to tell it if a teller don't tell it? And a teller don't tell it, it might not get told. Deuces. Deuces.